Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. About to do a very quick rehousing. I thought this one was going to take a little bit longer, but it didn't. This one features my Brachy Pelma Aratum. I picked this one up as a teeny tiny sling about six years ago, and now she is a larger, beautiful, young adult, hopefully female. I sexed the last one out. It's looking like a lady. This one is one of those species that I think beginners kind of cotton to because they are Brachy Pelma, and those are usually good beginners. Just be aware that they can be a little more skittish than some of the other Brachy species. At least mine is, and I've talked to some others that that have skittish ones and I've talked to others that there's a total sweetheart so just heads up if you are a beginner and you're looking at getting these guys also they're a little bit slow growing which you need to be aware of and by a little bit I mean very slow growing so enough of me talking let's get into the video and see my Brocky Pelmar Rodham all right so we're about to rehouse my young adult Brocky Pelmar or Rodham. I'm going to take this off. This one's a bit skittish, so we'll keep an eye on her as I talk. I picked this one up about close to six years ago, I think, five or six years ago. Was absolutely enamored by the look of these guys. Couldn't wait to grow it up. It did take a long time to grow. It, it was the Brachypelma species, it seems like it takes them forever to get from that third of an inch mark to the inch mark. After that, they seem to pick up quite a bit of size, which is great. But those first few years when they're just teeny tiny slings, could take forever. She ate well overall. I mean, there, she was a good feeder, just would take a while in pre-molt and wouldn't put on a heck of a lot of size in between molts. So while she's trying to escape, I'm going to go ahead and put the top on this for a second. She's a little, there she goes, she's skittish. <laughs> When I had her in originally, it was one of the Amac boxes or Jamie's enclosures with a little vent on top. And what she did, she did a little bit of burrowing, not a whole heck of a lot of it, put on a little bit of size and hung out in the open quite a bit. And then we moved her from one of those to one of these here that I get on Amazon. I will put a link, just know that they're not always available. And if you get them, there are little gaps here that slings can get through. So I like to cover them up with some tape or some silicone. You gotta be careful of that. But these guys are really nice looking. And then once she outgrew that, we put her into this one here which is the Exoterra breeding box small, which she is obviously outgrown. You can see she's a big girl now. And what we are going to put her into next is this one over here. My buddy Charles turned me on to these. They're hard plastic. You can get them on Amazon. Unfortunately, apparently when they were shipping them, a lot of them ended up broken. I've only received one broken one so far, but they were having a lot of problems with the male crushing them. So they switched to more of a milky, softer plastic. So I don't think they sell the harder plastic ones anymore. But what I did here was put the acrylic hinges on the back, the acrylic hasp on the front. I bought the equipment for that off Amazon too. It was rather easy. So you get a nice little cage here and just use a Dremel tool to make the ventilation slats or holes in the sides, all four sides. The inside has cork bark. I believe it's BioDude substrate with oak leaf litter and then a water dish. So hopefully she'll like this new enclosure. It'll give her a bit of extra room. We'll go ahead and get her in. I'll give some more notes on her. This one we might be able to just poke and pray. Or we might just be able to put it right in the other enclosure. <laughs> that was easy. And there we go. Wow. This is Tom Moran with two second rehousings. <laughs> She's a little, now for people who like the Brachypelma species, a lot of times I'll move out of the way so Billy can get the front of her. A lot of times we talk about them being great beginner species, very docile, even tractable. I found that she's a gorgeous girl, but she's very, very skittish. She'll all of a sudden take the bolting if she's surprised or startled. We'll see this newer closure. Maybe it'll calm her down a little bit. She hasn't been defensive at all. I think she might have kicked hairs at me once, and it was because a cricket bounced onto her and it freaked her out. But all in all, just a gorgeous spider, well-behaved. Now, growth rate, again, is going to be slow, so be prepared. I'm going to go ahead and close this so she doesn't come back out and, out and ruin it. She's still able to catch her through that. Growth rate is slow. So know that if you get these guys as a sling, you have a while before they're going to start showing the adult colors. I think it took her about three years and to show any of those adult colors. And remember, my temperatures can be a little on the lower end. I keep my tarantula room goes from anywhere from about 70 degrees on the lower shelf to about 76, 77 on the higher shelves. So people that are keeping them in the 80s, and I know a lot of folks just have rooms that are naturally 80 degrees, they'll grow faster. Right now, she's eating large crickets with no problem. When she was 
little, I did feed her pre-killed. I would cut up mealworms or kill little tiny red runner roaches and leave them in there. When she hit about an inch or so, she was able to hunt the red runner roaches, the little ones, with no problem. I did keep the substrate moist as a sling, and then as she got older and larger, I let things dry out in between, and she does not seem to prefer my moist substrate at all. This one actually had a water dish in it that I pulled out before we were rehousing, and I have seen her drink before, but if I moisten down a corner, she generally stays away from it. And I actually had some moist substrate in here and let it dry out a bit ahead of time so she wouldn't be climbing, hopefully climbing the wall because if it gets too moist and the tarantulas don't like the moist substrate, they will take to the walls. So there she is, Brachypelma. Around. I say she, I sexed the last molt. I know a lot of people are saying she looked very spindly and looked like a male. It does appear to be female. She does appear, appear to be female. Hopefully I'm not mistaken on that one. And again, I did look at the molt. But I'm hoping for a lady because they are absolutely stunning spiders. And as for whether or not they'd make a good beginner species, if you're aware of the fact that they're going to be a little more skittish more in lines at least mine i'm sure people will chime in and again temperament can vary from uh, specimen to specimen and from multiple i'm sure some people will chime in saying theirs are quite laid back mine's been pretty skittish i've heard from other people that they're pretty skittish mine's been along the lines of my brachypelma baby or boy me a lot kind of that type of skittishness but she doesn't kick hairs very much so that's a nice plus but overall i think somebody that's aware of the fact that it's going to take a while to grow and may not be a spider that you want to handle could do just fine with them so there we go brachypelma erratum i do not know the common name but i will look it up before i put the little tag on here that discusses what kind of species this is awesome little spider can't wait to grow her again still hoping it's a her even larger and she'll hopefully make for a very nice display spider All right, so I love it when they go that well. That was about as easy as they come. The poke and pray is kind of a joke Billy and I have when you take the tarantula and basically poke it in the butt and pray that it just goes into the enclosure where you want it to. I don't use it very often because unfortunately I found that with some spiders that are more predictable, they go right where you want them. Others, you poke them, they go where you don't want them. They can bolt off and I don't like to take that chance. So usually I use the catch cup. We had the catch cup ready if we needed it, but in this case, we definitely did it. She just walked right over in the other enclosure. So I love it when they go that smoothly. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough that you'd like to subscribe, very much appreciated. You can click the circle right up there. If you want to check out some more videos ahead of time to see if it's worth subscribing to, I don't blame you one bit. You can check those out over there. I answer all comments. It may take me a couple days because I tend to get a lot of them. But know that if you comment, I'll take the time to respond. Hope everybody out there is safe and well, and I'll catch you all next time.